Well, again, like the practice is 40 years old and like I've been there like 12 now. So I couldn't, I couldn't say much about like the initial 28 years. But one thing is true that like it, it is, it, uh, it starts as an organizational diagram that, in, that is in opposition to the, the strict division of space into rooms and like rooms into tables and like, like so from her early work and painting, it was already uh, evident that like the boundaries had to be more blurred and, and, and even the programming, uh, program allocation and functional allocation of spaces had to be blurred. And, and it, to this day, it is evident in like a lot of the work that we don't like hard boundaries uh, and, and fluid lines allow you greater degrees of freedom to articulate an organized space than rigid lines, obviously. But um, yeah, and, and it was never a materially oriented practice. So for sure, like like the initial, like even the Vitra fire station, like and, and so it had to be achieved one way or the other. Uh, and so like the Feno, like it's remarkable in, in many ways. It pushes engineering boundaries. Um, but in the end, you had to build the building. So you build it with what you know at that time. <laughs> and like you can't wait for you know, this magic material to come up or this magic. But in some sense, like we have recognized that phase has passed. Like we, we call it the extraordinary phase when you have to burst out of the box and like kind of lay claim to the amazing. Uh, otherwise, no one's gonna give a shit about what you're gonna say after. <laughs> like you, know, you gotta, you have to be vocal. Like and and that was something remarkable and uh, less understood about Zaha. Like she because she was so vocal. Like most of the people in the company were like when I joined, I was like 26. You know, we we never felt like we felt prote protected, like we could dare to dream and like, you know, because she's taking all the, the hate, <laughs> like so, um, yeah, so, and, and, and in that way, like it, like we try to still, uh, yeah, we're now investing greater and greater amount of resource to understand engineering, how we can achieve the same fluidity with less bulky things. So we have our team and then there's like, uh, we are building more and obviously the more we build, the better our detailing gets. Um, so yeah, so initially it was like about achieving that vision, like getting some stuff built. Um, and now it's for everyone to see that like, you know, like the Beijing airport, yeah, it is big. Yeah, it is a lot of steel, but it also is, is going to be a beacon for many um, many attempts that will follow. Like, and um, I think it's it's important to have these unique one-off buildings uh, for cultures to invest in them. So whether you get it built by concrete or not, it doesn't really matter. I think. Printing of concrete, like from what I know, is at least the earliest example was in '95 or something, and then so that's 20 years of evolution, and so we can only extrapolate from that data and and see five years from now what what, what it might be. Um, but one thing's for sure that I mean, of course, the concrete is going to get better, lighter, and like so. Uh, but I think like regardless, there will always be a limitation of uh, size of the printer. Even if it gets the size of the house, 
your house will be bigger than the printer. Like, so, or there will be some building which is bigger than the printer. That so, in in some sense, it's better to address the constraint like that. To think that like regardless how how big the printer gets, there will there will always be something bigger than it. So you have to think of like how you might be able to print and assemble. I mean that's one thing, and then um, and the other aspect is parallelness. Like obviously it makes so much more sense to have like 100 printers and print small parts and assemble. So rather than one big printer doing something. And so there might be a trade-off, like in some cases, it might be better to have a big printer and print one thing. In other cases, it might be have better to have like 100 printers and then, but then there's the cost of assembly and the time spent for assembly. Um, and so that also leads to the next question, on-site, off-site, or is it semi-on-site? So you're printing in a robot factory, like on-site, and then assembling parts. Um, these are interesting questions, I think, that are beginning to be asked, because until the last 20 years, like people have focused on just getting it extruded. However, which way was already great, like characterizing the material, um, getting these extrusion and the rheology of concrete right and like so yeah like I think the next five years is gonna define answers to these questions but and they're, they're, I, I don't think there will be a clear answer it will be based on how many things you want to print and what you're printing are you, are you gonna print on the entire house which I think is like a bit mm, unlikely <laughs> Uh, because, and that's true for almost every digital manufacturing technology, I think, that it, 90, let's say 90% of the construction industry is small and medium business. So, if you take it from that, like if you want to have an impact, like you better address the economics of a small and medium business, which means if you can make like a small enough printer and it is valuable in a reasonably small scale building, then you have better chance of that becoming um, mainstream and relevant. Like, I mean, unlike like the Airbus industry and uh, airplane industry where it's like 100% like giant corporations, like there is no uh, neighborhood granddaddy building an airplane but there is a neighborhood contractor. And, and that, I think, changes like a, a lot of things. So um, my preference would be that, that it is more small scale and not like a super giant thing, but like it, it depends, I think. Like uh, the economics might not be so viable for small scale application yet um, because you're putting so much catalyst into the, the cement that's expensive <laughs> and, um, but like like with everything else like I think like you the first burst of uh, activity needs to be the Ferrari <laughs> and then like the Puntos like uh, yeah if you if you put out the Punto like no one's gonna give care about the Ferrari <laughs> like so I think we, we have to wait for a few years until the exciting you know, cathedrals of 3D printing are made, <laughs> and then, yeah, like then there might be a, a wider interest to, to use it. Yeah. Again, I'm not any great expert on like any of the hardware side or the engineering side, and, and uh, <clears throat> I just have awareness, let's say. So, um, what, what it is in, in some ways, like at least the way uh, Block Research Group has been doing this knitting things um, uh, is, in, is in combination with the cable net. And so in that sense, like longer the span, 
better this proportional relationship between the size of the scaffolding and the size of the structure. So when you, if, if you build something small, obviously the proportion between the edge beam and the, and the cable net will be not in favor. It will always look bulky. Um, but like longer the span, the better. Like, so if you go to Munich Stadium kind of span, or even half that, let's say, that, that, then you're beginning to see efficiencies of lightweight textiles. I mean, textiles, in many ways, like, we, I think we shouldn't see it as fabric. Like, we should see it as in combination with, like, uh, fiber reinforced uh, FRP plastics is also a kind of textile. Um, cable net in combination with fabric, that's also a textile in a way. And uh, in the sense that they have warp and weft directions or they have knitting properties. And um, yeah, so that's where it will be beneficial. Like if you're building a bridge and you can span over with the formwork. Um, and whilst the traffic can still go, so you don't need scaffolding. Maybe that's, that's one place that uh, has benefits. Um, so from the engineering point of view, I, I wouldn't know much else. But like from a kind of design point of view, I think there is there, there, there are qualities of textiles which are like more interesting. They're like soft and uh, sometimes they let light through and like these kind of qualities are very much human scale and human human relatable um, so maybe that that's where textiles get used more and more and, um, and 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 also it's very lightweight like I don't know what happened to that BMW car like the Gina uh, that seemed like an amazing idea like and, and hopefully there is a future like that you know?